Jesus is coming soon, friends. And remember, you people here, try to be that called out group. Remember, the Bible said in the last church age to be that lady or sin church age. Luke 1. That's just where the Pentecostal church has got to. That's where they're all getting. If you don't watch God, sort of come down and pull a little ribbon out here and here and here, make up the ride and be gone. You see? So let's be up now and believe God and have faith in God and believe that God is here. Hallelujah! I'm sure you see what I'm talking about. Hallelujah! It was waved over the people, and the first time that will come forth for the bride age for a resurrection out of dark denominationalism will be a message that the full maturity of the word has turned back again in its full power and being waved over the people by the same signs and wonders that he did that. Now, it's beginning to pull away. The weeks begin to be seen. This is not a Pentecostal age. This is the latter day age. This is the bride age. This is the evening light. This is when Malachi 4 must be fulfilled before God's pattern. This is Luke 17, 30 to be fulfilled. This is the time of Jeremiah and all the rest of them that Joel has spoken of these days. This is that day. I have heard, Lord, that it was coming, but now I see it with my eyes. See, a man can say anything, but unless God interprets that word. See, now we have our own interpretation. We say it means this, and this is Methodist says this, the Baptist says this, the Pentecostal said this, the one that says this, the two that says this, and the whole mind. There you are. But God don't need no interpreter. He's his own interpreter. He interprets his own word by vindicating it in the age that is purposed for, the age that is given for. We're not living in a Pentecostal age. We're living in another age. See, we're not living in a Methodist age. We're living in another age. We're living on up here to the bride age, the calling out of the church and getting it together for the rapture. That's the age that we're now living. To my honest opinion, that's exactly the truth. Now, with patience, we have to wait for this. For the prophecies as promised Every one of them must be fulfilled in its age. For it foretells us the author has before done this and we wait to see him do it again. What a time it is that we're living in. Something like uh, a calendar. You look at the calendar and find out uh, what day of the year you're living in. And you look at God's Bible to see what age we're living in. We're not Living in the Methodist age, the Baptist age, we're living in the bride age, the calling, bringing back to God through a channel that he promised to bring him back in. He promised to it. Did Jesus say in the last days, Matthew 24, 24, the two would be so close it would deceive the very James predestinated, the elected ones, if it was possible. Almost like the real thing. So, in the last days. Now, you see, it's wheat time now. It's getting harvest time. This is not Luther's age. This is not Pentecost age. This is a bride age. As Moses called a nation out of a nation, Christ today is calling a church out of a church. You see, the same thing in type. Take them to the glorious, eternal, promised land. And I say that they have never been able to preach how to be born again. Of course, they took the scriptures over in John 3 and told Nicodemus, you must be born again. Now, they thought the born again, the new birth was that you came to the altar and you got down and you was real sorrowful for your sin. And in a sense, that's true. But when you godly sorrow, when you get godly sorrow for your sin, you start off with God right there. And in your intellectual mind, that makes you a Christian, a Christian. But now when you're talking about the bride age, when you're talking about the bride age, how can you get into the bride, the body of Jesus Christ, then that's something again. That's something again. Now we're come into a place now where the denominations are ended. Now, how many knows that any denomination 
uh, lodge, I don't like to say church, because there's only one true church, and that's the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Any denominational lodge that professes to be a church, that you go into, you find out that it is spiritually dead. How many realize that? Now that, what is that? That shows you that the life has left the denomination. And it's coming now into another age, which is known in the Bible as the wheat age, the bride age. Now, it is the bride that is going to be uh, the body of Jesus Christ. So, in other words, in this age that we're living in, now the bride age, to get into the bride age, to get in the first resurrection, I'm speaking to us that are left alive. Now, I, we can't do this about those that have passed away. That's all left up to the Lord. But for you and I today, in order to... Now, we believe that a prophet has come and brought a message. Amen. And it, uh, that is God's great sign today that the promise is nigh. Yeah, yeah. The provided way has been provided for God for you to get into the body of Jesus Christ. Now, I say... That there is a bride and a body here on earth now potential. By foreordination of God, God has predestinated a bride body to be here so that he can dwell in today. Now, many are called by Malachi 4 and 5. Many are called out of the denominations by Malachi 4 and 5. Now a few of those are going to be chosen to make up the body of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now notice that the word church in the Greek word, and of course we're not uh, Greek, great Greek scholars. We just believe it lays very little difference in the Greek and the King James Version. But uh, the Greek word there in Ecclesia is Ecclesia, and it means called out. Now their God has sent a prophet in this end time to call you out of denomination. Now, after you come out of the denomination, then you're a mixed multitude. You, uh, you, uh, see the pillar of fire. You eat the word that comes down from heaven, right? Yes. You see the blind see and the lame walk and you hear the gospel preach. You see it and you hear it. But, what you hear and what you see must be mixed with faith. Yes. And many that heard, as Paul said, uh, that come out of Egypt heard, but what they heard was not mixed with faith. But there was two, Joshua and Caleb, that what they heard and what they saw was mixed with revelation. They had revelation, and they went into the bride. Amen. They went into the body, which was the promised land of that day. How many understand that? But in that room, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one mind. What was in one mind about children? That Joel, the prophecy of Joel, God was going to pour out his spirit. Why can't we do that this morning? Why can't we? We're in the eighth day. We're over in the bride age. Brother Brown said it's fire falling time to move on for the bride. See? I would to God I had some way that I could just cut your heart open, place a little revelation in there. Even you could memorize what I said, that wouldn't do no good. Memorize what Brother Brown said, that wouldn't do no good. But if you could get it down in your heart, God seeketh such to worship Him in the Spirit and in the truth. Not by head knowledge. Now you know that Brother Brown said, God gives, now I'm quote Brother Branham, God gives revelation to them that are obedient. Obedient to the word, letter of the word, see. God gives revelation to those that are obedient. Now he that is of the truth, that's doing right, reading the Bible, praying, really doing everything the natural they can do right, they love the revelation. See, they'll come up to the truth, see, the Bible says. But those that just like one watching television, kind of playing church, you know, and, and all these other little old things, little foxes eat up the vine, they won't come to the truth. 
Because the revelation will expose their need. So they won't come. But the little bride hunger and thirst before she's got to get a revelation. Amen. Now with her head bowing. Now I don't know what all I said. I, I just, they just, I just, it, it comes to me and I just give it out. And if it offended you, I didn't mean it. It wasn't me. I didn't mean to do it. Amen. Maybe I said something, maybe you thought was hard, but you forgive me. I, I don't, I don't mean to offend nobody, but I want to help you. You can't go on, we can't go on just wishy-washy. It's got to happen, children. It's the promise, word revealed for the hour. And anything that'll deny that token, that one day, you'll see. Uh, Don't believe it, children. Stay with that promise of the token. And the little bride is waiting in obedience and love and love and obedience, waiting for the life to come upon her to make that word live. The works that I do shall ye do also. Then we enter into the bride. Amen. Now, if we're going to have a bride, we've got to have a seat. Amen. So now, the mouth that uh, we've got the spoken word is the original seat. And what Malachi 4 and 5 was the turn of the electric car back to the original seat. Amen. And the seat is the seat of Abraham, which is the seat of faith. Amen. Which was the seat of Christ. Amen. And the spoken word is the original faith. The original faith. That's why I did. Oh, what? You didn't realize what it was, but God started dealing with Brother Brown and said, ask what you will. Well, you need, you, what are you, are you hunting? Yes, yes, I'm hunting. He said, well, well, uh, seek the squirrel. He carried him to death. He said, well, there'll be a young red fox squirrel out on that limb. Bang, he shot it off. He said, it bled. It wasn't a beast, it bled. He took him home and ate. Amen. He killed five of them. Killed three another day. Began to speak the word. And it oh, happened no. five times. Is that right? Amen. What was it? Showing just Showing us that the spoken word, the original seed, is here. Yes, yes, now notice here, at about that time, when the spoken word, the original seed, came into manifestation, then the hour arrived for Brother Brandon to go out west. He had to go out west, right? And when he went out west, the seven angels, to the seven church ages, came to Brother Brandon, Right? And the angels of the Lord caught him up in that consolation and told him to come back in that it was the opening of the seal. That was Malachi 4 and 5. Amen. That was Elijah's ministry, which was Revelation 10 and 7, was to open up the book of redemption. Amen. Now, this is the book of redemption right here. Amen. This is the book of redemption. And redemption is to buy back. Amen. Now notice that after the seven church ages are over, the Bible turns into a book of redemption by Malachi 4 and 5. Amen. Amen. The seals that had the revelation of how oh, to be born again, Amen. to enter into this body here, was locked up in the Bible. Amen. But God sent a prophet. He moved out of this ministry of evangelism, came into the ministry of Elijah the prophet, brought the opening of the seal, brought the revelation of the seven seals, and thereby restored the spoken word, the original seed. Wasn't a book of redemption? Wasn't it sealed up by seven seals? Then the mystery of his will was sealed up, wasn't it? So at the end of the seven church ages, he's standing on the outside. Now he turns, takes the seals off the book. Now notice first it's the book of redemption. Redemption. Redemption is restoration. Salvation and deliverance. Now, now what am I saying? The seventh church age did not find out. They probed at salvation. They probed at the mystery. And they found out a little bit about it. But in the, the seventh verse, he's put on the outside. And then we go out of the ages 
out of the dispensation Amen. and we step over into a new day, Amen. a new thing, Amen. the bride age. Amen. There he stands in the Son of Man Amen. with the book open in his hand Amen. and now he's revealing the contents of the book Amen. which is all about how to be redeemed. Amen. How to understand the mystery of his will. Oh, Lord Jesus. Just thank friend that you could be living in the south. When the prophets told that all the, the saints of old, Peter said, Paul, Paul is speaking things hard to be understood. Amen. Amen. But to those in the end times, we understand what's in the book. The mystery of his will has been revealed to us. Think about it. A book of redemption. Come off the book. Time runs out. Yeah. Yeah. Then we go over into the Friday. Oh, my friend. Now, notice here, please. Now, what is to be made known is the mystery of his will at the end of the seven church ages, at the opening of the seven seals. See? Stands on the outside of the churches. Here he reveals this great mystery. Amen. 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 Through not as the anointing of the Son of God. Now notice your eyes can't come open to the anointing thing. The anointing's got to change. But when the anointing changes, see, first the mystery's with the Lord. Then if it's going to be revealed, it's got to come to a prophet. And then the elected runs on to the prophet. Then, then the, the mystery starts unfolding to you. Father, Son, of Man, and Lord. Now, notice here, now you find out the mystery of the In other words, you find out that you wasn't born here by accident. No. You never just happen to run on to that, to that minute. God calls you. God led you there. To, to rule over your fondest dreams. You find out that he loved you before the foundation of the world. Let you be born in the end time. Led you by the Holy Spirit. And now, above all the people upon the earth, he is revealing the mystery of his will to you. Not that you're not the, what you wanted. No. You didn't know nothing about the mystery of his will. You didn't know nothing about his will. It wasn't because you wanted it. Or I, I'd like to hear it. No, you didn't know nothing about it. But it was his own good will and purpose. That he purposed in himself. He purposed and saw you before the foundation world. Now what happened after this seventh angel passed over the scene, opened up, opened up the seals, time was no more, and you entered into a new day altogether. Yeah, a complete new day altogether. You entered into the eternal day, which is not the seventh age, but is the eighth age. And that eighth age, that eighth age is the eternal day, which is the coming of the captain. Notice here, you have seven things here, and what is it up here? There it is. There, there's your new day right here. Sir. And that comes at the end of the dispensation. Or somebody said, well, I don't believe in dispensation. Well, the Bible says dispensation. When all the dispensations are finished, the last one was the seventh church. Age. Then on the outside of that, God reveals this great mystery from the seals being loose, see? Time is all over now. Then that angel stood up in Revelation 10 and 1, had a book open in his hand. Now the whole book is open. The whole revelation is out, showing you the mystery of his will. <clears throat> it's been shown to you. Now we're not living in the seventh age. We're over in the bride age. And then we've got to go on with the message. 
He can't stand over the seventh church and say, well, messenger, 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 messenger. The messenger was the friend of the bridegroom and he was a bridge in the way. He was bridging away from denominations, law, bridging it over into true grace that was coming by the revealed word of God. He bridged the way. But he passed all the same. And here we are setting tonight in a new day altogether, which is the Wheat Friday. Now this is a complete new day, and it is this revelation of the mystery of his will being made known to you is resurrecting another apostolic church. The, the seven church ages fades away. There was no bride there. Why? They put Christ on the outside of the church. We say, well, after the third chapter of Revelation, the third chapter of Revelation shows you everything that was promised to the church age. See? That's all. The third chapter of Revelation shows you what was promised to the church age. But see, what is happening to the bride is a revelation. And that is hid underneath the seven seals. See? That's the bride age. Now notice that God is resurrecting a perfect Ephesian church. So perfect, so perfect that it'll be without spot, blemish, or any wrinkle. So perfect and so full of the power of God that it will resurrect all of the seven ages. Notice it is in the eighth age, the bright age, that the resurrection takes place. When time has run out. Now what's he going to do? That all in dispensations are over. And now he enters into a new day. Dispensations are over. There's no more dispensations now. We're not in a dispensation now because dispensation is time. We are now sitting here this morning in an eternal day. See? When you receive the Holy Spirit, you are eternal. You can no more die than God can die. How could you be, a, how could you be subject to time if you have an eternal spirit within you? See? You're over in the bright age. Fullness of, fullness of time has come. Dispensation is over. You're in the bright age. So now here's where all the trouble comes. Here's where all the hardship comes. Here's where the great separation of the tares and the wheat comes. Now you've got to have a new experience for a new day. Your old garment that you had over here in the seven church age will not qualify over here in the bride age. Got to have it. How many see that with all your heart? Now the new birth is not by any sensation at all. It's not if you got down the altar and you felt a quiver go down your spine or, or you just shouted or you spoke in tongues. That has nothing to do with it. The Bible uh, say, did you feel it? Do you believe? Do you believe the word of God? Then yeah. if you believe it, you are saved by grace. And only no man can call Jesus his Lord outside the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost opens up your understanding to the word of God for the hour that you promised that, I promise that you're living in, the promise that is made for your hour. When you can understand what that promise is, that's the mystery of his will for you. Then you have the birth that will qualify you for bride material. Now if you're trying to hold on to an old garment you had over the seven church age, I ain't saying that that ain't going to save you. But it's not enough to get you off the earth to go in the rapture. But they cannot get down in there interpreting those things in that capstone. Amen. In fact, they're dragging over their birth, their birth that they had in the seventh day, and lapping it over in the bride age. The little elected seeds that here's the true thing, they'll quickly know that that's not it. Because there's only one message left, and that is the revelation of how to receive the capstone. All right, now let's hurry now. Now notice here, Revelation 10 and 7, the seven church age messenger, is the shout, the son of man, seed sower in the former rain. Former rain. Say, so what about Azusa Street? Well, it ain't in the Bible. 
I don't preach Azusa Street because it ain't in the Bible. The former ain't wasn't Azusa Street. It come through the Son of Man, Brother Branham. The former rain through Brother Branham was the pure seed word. Pure seed word. Now, not all the revelation, but it was the pure seed word. The Bible said, serving out of seed. The prophet said, serving out of seed. The Bible said, repent and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The prophet laid down a pure seed and said, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Miss your sins shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The prophet said, you and your children. You know. Amen. Huh? The Bible said, predestination. Before ordained and predestinated by the will of God. Names put on the Lamb's book of life, hidden from the foundation of the world. The prophet just lays it out just like that. But he brings the pure seed word. So out of the pure seed word foundation can come forth life, revelation. The life of the seed begins to break out. He sows the seed in the former rain, the pure wheat word. And, the, and the, he's the sower of the former rain. And then, now we're getting a little something here for tonight. And then the reaper, the sower of the seed comes forth, Malachi 4, 5. To lay a foundation for the reaper of the harvest to come forth. As Paul said in 1 Corinthians, he that soweth Amen. and he that reapeth are one and the same ministry. Amen. And the message and that message are one. <laughs> so that both he that soweth and he that reapeth might rejoice. To death. John said, Don't be jealous of me. Don't, don't feel sorry for me because I'm fading away and leaving the thing. So that the message comes. Said, don't feel jealous of me, disciple. He said, My joy is full. But I'm happy. I'm ready to go. I'm tired. I'm weary. I bought this old Jezebel for long. I'm tired. I'm weary. Don't feel sorry for me. He said, My joy is full. He said, I've done heard the voice of the writer. Oh. Amen. Oh, wow. He said, I'm not the bridegroom. Said the disciples, I'm not the bridegroom. I don't have that ministry. He said, I'm the friend. I'm a friend of that bridegroom. He said, I'm just introducing you to him. My Lord, can't get no plainer than that. All right. How many like that? So he that soweth and he that reapeth are one and the same. The message and the messenger are one. And Jesus said, I and the Father are one, and you and I are one. I'm an, see, it's a one. Coming back to a one. They were all one. Huh? There's no male or female in Christ Jesus. We're all one lump, one body, one loaf of bread. 